A few weeks ago, I was in Copenhagen for a couple of days. I was there for work, but in between the meetings and on the weekend, I got to wander around the city. The weather while I was there was unbelievable. So Tom was very jealous working in London on the house while I set out on a solo adventure. Take a train ride just to see you. Ride for hours just to please you. morning was a hard start, I'm not gonna lie to you. We went to a football game last night. I know nothing about football, so that was interesting, and then ended up at a house party and I got back to my hotel at four in the morning. So, check out was a struggle. But I am basically here for work, but I've arranged my return flight super late this evening, so I've just got a day to myself in Copenhagen. I have actually been here before, which it's quite nice because it means today I don't have to go and tick off all the tourist attractions. Go see the palaces or the museums or uh, Freetown. Because I've done them all before. So I am quite literally just having a day to myself. There's three things I always do on a day alone, whether that's abroad or home. And I will go for a really long walk, which I've been doing for the last two hours. I'll go buy a book or bring a book and have a read and I'll go to charity shops and vintage shops. When I've ticked off a city or I've seen the major things that a city has to offer, that's what I do next and that's my plan for all of today. I'm hoping with enough slices of pizza this hangover will leave me, but it's after one now and I still feel horrendous, so my hopes aren't very high. At work yesterday they brought, they had like a pastry morning and the pastries were so good. I spent my morning in the hotel trying to find where they got them from and I did. So that's what I did this morning. I think it was called Anderson Bakery. And I got the vegan, one of the vegan pastries. It was really, really good. So if you are here, highly recommend that bakery. It's a little bit out of the way. Well, depending on where you're staying. Went to a bookstore and they had loads of English options, which was great for me. So I picked up this book, which I have read rave reviews about. Apparently I'm gonna cry my eyes out. Again, feeling too fragile for that, but it's a lovely day. My co-workers said that the odds of being in Copenhagen in March and getting this sort of weather is like unheard of. It's been perfect blue skies every single day and I've been here since Thursday, so three days in a row. I'm a little bit concerned because it's a very short book and I've got about seven hours to kill until my flight <laughs> and I've spent the last three days walking around Copenhagen already, so I've seen a lot of it. And I'm back in England. I was taking a look through the footage and I'm talking about cafes and charity shops and bookstores and I realized I didn't talk to you about basically the coolest thing that I found when I was out there and it was all of the different home stores. The Nordics just know how to do houses. I think I must have gone into so many ceramics shops and 
art shops and basically I just did a lot of browsing. I didn't buy anything because I didn't actually have the luggage to bring it back. But being there and seeing one of those shops just gave me so much inspiration for when I got home. And it's actually quite interesting but Copenhagen was the place that I realized I probably don't want to do the Nordic theme quite so much. Now when I'm talking Nordics I think like super neutral but greys and off-whites and there's not much colour at all and maybe I'm just getting my styles mixed up, maybe that's not Nordics at all but it's something I've always liked the look of and when we first started doing the house I thought it was where I was going to go with it mostly because I thought it was quite easy to execute and you can't really go wrong with simplicity but then I ended up at this house party and this was the dining room where I ended up and I don't know what it was, it might have been the beer but I just thought it was so beautiful. And since then I have just been finding nothing but images similar to this on Instagram and I don't know what the style is, I don't have knowledge in terms of interior design but I'm talking like it looks kind of 70s, there's a lot of wood, like darker woods, all very cozy, nice lighting, kind of rich tones and I'm very very into it. So I've done a bit of a pivot, well not really a pivot because nothing was decided yet, but some things are going to look a little bit different to how I thought they would maybe two weeks ago. And that's fine. And what's good about doing this process so slowly is that I think I'm just really developing my style as we go. I think if we just did it really quickly I'd end up with a house that, I don't know, maybe didn't suit me very much. Maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself but I really feel like stumbling upon all of this and these images and going down this route, I kind of feel like I found my style. Anyway, I could execute it terribly but who knows. But because of that, I came home with a lot of inspiration and I've done a lot of shopping. So I just kind of today wanted to take you through a little bit of a homeware haul. Now this is a pretty accessible homeware haul, everything's quite affordable, a lot of it's second hand, a lot of it's from the very lower end of the price spectrum in terms of home goods. Uh, so I hope that, you know, maybe you find something you like or you just find some inspiration. So first up, and I bought these a while ago, hence why they're still kind of more on the minimal side of things, but I still really like them and I think they'll pair really well with some darker woods, are some things from Primark. First up is this I think really cool shaped vase, um, it's got a little bit of speckle and like a sheen to it which I don't love, I will be honest, I'm thinking about maybe sanding it down but you only see it when you look up really really close and I just thought it was a really interesting shape. That was six pounds. Next up I got this one, also from Primark, again a super cool shape, it's also speckled, I just thought it was super cute and it would just do really well on a cabinet. Or something like that, um, just adds a bit of interest. Oh, I forgot to say, I think that was four pounds maybe? But again, super affordable. And then the final one is just this little thing here. Um, I actually think I'm going to use this on a dining room table, get an interesting shaped candle inside it. I thought that could re look really cool. I don't think that's what it's for, and I probably won't like the candle, but I thought it was really cute. And I don't know how much this was as well, I think it was two pound fifty. Next up, I just got one thing from Etsy. I don't know if it's going to look tacky or like a little bit too young when I try to style it, but I just thought it was really cute um, and I wanted to give it a go. And that's this little <laughs> pot. Uh, it, I thought it was just adorable because of the face and I quite liked the colour. Again, it's like a pinky peachy, so I'm not sure where the styling is going to be a bit odd, uh, but I don't know, I'm gonna give it a go and I thought it was really really cute um, and if I don't like it, it would be a good gift for someone I know that's younger than me. Um, <laughs> might be shifting that off but uh, yeah, I'll give it a go, I'll try to style it, let's see. Then just one thing from Ikea, I really really try to avoid buying house stuff from Ikea, uh, obviously not furniture, they're super affordable and super accessible and they're amazing but like the prints, the decorations, I feel like they have the same range for a very very long time so people become very familiar with it and you can almost walk into a house and know what bits are from Ikea, that's not a problem obviously if you like something you should buy it but uh, for me I just try to avoid stuff that I can immediately recognize as Ikea stuff but having said that I immediately went against that and I got this vase and I just think it looks so much more expensive than it was, I don't know if you can see it's kind of one of those ribbed glasses in, with like an ombre effect and I just think this as a flower vase or something would just add 
some interest versus just a regular glass vase and I thought that was really cute. I have no idea how much it was, but it was Ikea, so it's probably super affordable. Then I have the ugliest vase of all time, but I wanted to talk about it because if you live in London, it's such a fun thing to do and it's a recommendation. This is a vase that I painted myself and I hope now all of you can recognize that I have absolutely no creative ability whatsoever. It looks horrendous, but we're going to see what I can do with it. The reason I wanted to tell you about this was we actually did this as a group event or a bunch of us girls went um, for a couple of our friends' birthdays uh, and you basically pick out a vase, I think you pay five pounds to paint it and then you pick out what you wanted. This was 30 or 40 pounds, um, but it's obviously you're paying for the experience as well as the materials. So you just spend the whole evening, it's bring your own booze, we drank Prosecco, we painted these, and then you pick them up a couple of weeks later after they've put them in the kiln. Um, yeah, I thought it was cool. And also kind of nice that there will be one thing in your house that you know literally no one else in the world has. Even if it does look like a small child did this at primary school and gave it to you for Mother's Day. So... All of this was bought before my trip to Copenhagen. Then my new style kicked in. I don't know whether this is going to end up looking like it's some sort of 70s key party, but it could look cool if executed right. So here we go. First up, I got these wine glasses. They are orange, obviously, again, ribbed like the IKEA vase. And I just think they are so cool, quite vintage looking. Very 70s cigar lounge aesthetic, um, but I, I love them. I couldn't say no. So I bought four of those on the kitchen shelves, the stuff that you want to display. These are going to look so cool and uh, yeah, just great for a beautiful table for dinner parties. Oh, I forgot to say, all of these next bits are from Matalan. These were from Matalan and they were four pound a glass, which I've been looking at some that are 20 pound a glass. Looking, I would never be able to buy them, but yeah, a very affordable alternative. Next, I've got this massive tortoise shell vase on a real vase height, it seems. I don't know where all of these are gonna go, but again, it's like the second I saw this come through the post and I compared it to um, the white one that I got. I don't know, there's something about darker tones, more interest that I'm really leaning towards. Obviously this is still beautiful and there'll definitely be a place for it. Um, but yeah, just kind of my thought process around going for more browns and dark earth and reds and oranges. And this was £10, but it was on sale for £8, so I think really cool. I think also if you get some flowers coming out of this, it's going to look amazing. And then continuing on the tortoiseshell hype, I bought these from Wilco. They were £10, I think, for four, which again is really good. Uh, maybe £12 for four. And I just thought these, again, next to one another, looks really cool. Very kind of old school. Tom absolutely hates them, um, which is fine, but they're staying. Then the next things haven't come yet, but I wanted to tell you about them anyway, because they're so cool. Uh, I was looking around for interesting candle holders or vases, as I said, on a real decorative hype at the moment. Um, and I just wanted something a little bit interesting. When you start to see the lounge come together, it's very neutral, like woods and blacks, and there's not much colour. So I wanted some ways of bringing in colour which were fun and not too imposing. There will obviously be a lot of colour in the art we eventually go for. But I was looking, as I said, big tangent there, at uh, interesting candle holders and I came across a store on Alibaba, which I think is like AliExpress, which is shipping stuff in from China, but AliExpress has super long wait times and you have to order in really high quantities. It's more for like manufacturing. Um, and then there's AliExpress, which I think is just shorter shipping times. Um, and you can order in small quantities. So I could get like one of each. And these are the three that I got, or four actually. Again, I just think they're so cute and so interesting. And it's something that you have in the middle of your dining room table, say. And when you walk in, you just notice them. And I thought they were really cool. All of them together came to around £45, uh, which I actually think is really good for something that's so different. And every time I've seen them in shops in London, which let's be honest, half of the time are probably from AliExpress anyway, um, they've been upwards of £20, £30 each. So I think that's pretty good going. And then you knew there would not be 
a video about purchases if I didn't have some stuff from Facebook Marketplace. We got this beautiful black sofa from Habitat. Uh, it's not actually from Habitat, it was from Facebook Marketplace. The sofa was super expensive, I don't remember how much, but we got it for £400. There's not a mark on it. Uh, super excited for that. And to go with it perfectly from Facebook Marketplace, we also got an ottoman uh, from made.com and again that was £50, which is insane for something from made.com and something that's also uh, in great nick. It looks like no one's ever put their feet on it ever, so that's really good. Then I've got my favourite dining room chairs. As I said, I saw or have seen a whole bunch of these cool like 70s, mid-century, old style dining rooms and I'm obsessed with them. So I bought the dining room chairs. They were £150 for all four, which from what I am seeing mid-century dining room chairs sell for, so good. It's like, what, £37.5 a chair. £37.50 would be a smarter way of saying that. And then to go with the dining room table, I was just looking at mid-century dining room tables and I actually found one from Maid that I really liked the look of. But when I went to their showroom, it was a completely different colour in person. It was almost like a um, greeny wood colour, uh, whereas the dining room chairs were super rich and a reddy colour, so I knew they wouldn't go. But while I was there, I was seeing the sample of the tabletops, and I noticed that one of their tables, the wood colour, would have gone perfectly with the chairs, or at least a much closer match and something that I think would go a lot better. Unfortunately, they didn't have that table in stock. Um, or like on display for me to order and thank god they didn't because when I went home I went on to eBay and I found the exact same table from £850 down to £400 and then eBay had a 20% off discount code on furniture items I think up until the Sunday. Sorry, battery just died but we are back. So basically with the voucher and everything I ended up getting this made.com dining room table it's not secondhand, it's refurbished, so it was basically an X display, but there's no marks or anything um, for £320, which is just insane. So that was eBay, but now going back to Facebook Marketplace. So yes, I come back from Copenhagen, I'm super inspired, I love mid-century, I want dark woods, etc. So I go straight onto Facebook Marketplace and uh, I find some pretty nice things. I also bought this like shelving unit and cupboard thing. Here's the base. But it was £100 on Facebook Marketplace and I thought it looked super cute. This is what it looks like up. And I think with the right decorations it could look really cute. This was the West Elm one I wanted that was £750. So I thought at £100 just grab it and what's the worst that can happen? Anyway, what, the reason I'm telling you this is because while we picked this up, inside the hallway was this and I asked the guy who's plants that and he said that's the dumping ground it's when people want to give something away for free they put it there and look at it it's a massive cheese plant I think maybe not I don't really know what it is I think it's a cheese plant anyway it's in a real bad way so tonight I'm gonna try and prune this back to health Unfortunately, there are a few that didn't make it, but... <laughs> it looks so sad! I feel like it just needs so much support, like... It seems very sad. Yeah, maybe if we get a stick and tie it to the stick. And there we go, we've got a, a plant. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna survive, but, uh, and I don't know whether tying it up is good for it, but I feel like that's good for a big plant. I've given it a whole bunch of water. I'm just gonna leave it here overnight, water it tomorrow morning as well, because it, the top is almost dry already. It obviously needed a very good drink, and I will keep you in the loop about how it does, but, uh, just another reason to shop second hand. I bet you've never bought a piece of furniture and left the store with a free plant, have you? So, 
Here we go. <laughs> now, as I said, there was the West Elm unit that I loved, 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 and uh, still think about it now. But I'm thinking we can just put that unit up, dress it a little bit, and get an idea over whether it's something we'd like. We got it for hundred pounds. We'd easily be able to sell it on for hundred pounds. So no loss, no gain, if that's a term. Uh, but let's just put it up and see. Now that we've got all these cute little uh, new trinkets, let's put them on a shelf. Okay, I've just put some stuff on there. Uh, it looks absolutely horrendous, but that's okay. Not every attempt is gonna be a winner. I do think the cabinet's okay. I think obviously it's not in the right place in the room and it's not got the right stuff on it and it's not got the dining room table and the chairs to match. So it's feeling very out of place right now, but it was a hundred pounds. You can't really go wrong. So. At least that's what it looks like for now. That's the shape of it. The stuff that's on it definitely isn't the stuff that will end up staying on it. We'll actually be putting our record player on there. I think we'll have a lamp that's the right size for it, not quite literally touching the top. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but that's fine. I just wanted to get the cabinet up to see it. And I think a hundred pound very well spent. And that is it. That is all that I've bought at the moment. Uh, got some really cool stuff coming, which I'll show you, but more in terms of room reveals. I hope you enjoyed getting a little bit of insight into what I do in the evenings once I get paid. Um, and if you'd like to follow along watching the actual house come together, please hit the subscribe button. We upload videos every single Wednesday. That is it for this week. Thank you as always for watching and bearing with me as I'm discovering my style, changing my mind every 10 seconds, coming to you with new ideas every week. Uh, if you're not sick of me yet, I appreciate you. And I'll uh, see you next Wednesday. Goodbye. Left it. Come now.